Hey everyone, it's been quite a busy week or two for Liz Truss as she settles into her new job, new email account, testing out the coffee machine, and discovering of course that HR is not human resources, but in fact high risk, a department at the Bank of England. Interest rates are going to be going up a lot, which makes a change from the past couple of years where we actually saw zero interest loans. Those are the ones of course named as such because people have zero interest in paying back the money, typically used to purchase buy-to-let properties or to set up an energy business that subsequently goes into receivership. The cost of energy has stabilised to be fair, although it's still cheaper to get burgled than to leave the lights on when you go out, and if you want to keep your bills down, I'd suggest buying a paperweight to hold them in place. That's all about the suggestions anyone has really, other than maybe turn everything off and work from the office during the week, rather than the living room or the veranda, or indeed the local pub. Uh, I mean, I hear some people have been doing that, obviously, not me, just in case anyone from work is listening. But anyway, if you look in the dictionary, a truss is supposed to support things, not collapse them. So what is Liz Truss's game plan with the economy? Rishi Sunak is of course long gone, busy re-evaluating that US green card he has, and the new Chancellor is Kwasi Kwarteng, who's certainly making good in the promise to eliminate stamp duty, but mostly by eliminating the concept of anyone being able to buy a house anytime soon. The current plan is a huge gamble on growth, reduce taxes, blow up the deficit and hope that growth manages to pay for it all. Although with companies looking to escape the energy crisis in Europe, there's a strong argument to be made for that policy. JP Morgan has recently been looking at evacuating its Hamburg operations this winter and relocating everything to London if the lights go out and Germany descends into a three-day week. Numerous American companies have talked about expanding into the UK now, especially given that those managers in a US salary would suddenly be getting a 10% pay rise thanks to recent moves in the currency markets. In many respects, this is a bit like the early 90s, where a series of shock financial moves ultimately led to a booming economy three or four years later, but this of course assumes that the government can survive. In 1997, Tony Blair managed to swoop in at the last minute and claim that economic prize as his own, although Keir Starmer is no Tony Blair. A competent opposition leader would be all over the news, seen by the public as a prime minister in waiting, but most people in the streets would struggle to recognise Keir Starmer, and what few interviews he has done have been lacking at best. He recently gave a fairly bad one where, to test how on pulse he was with working class people, he was asked about the World Cup next month, and he wasn't able to name a single England striker. Although, to be fair, that's only one fewer than Gareth Southgate. Anyway, see you next week. Like these, please subscribe.